Hello and welcome to the beginner tutorial for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. That's a pretty long game title, so most of the players call the game Super Turbo, or ST for short. I'm David Serlin, the lead producer from Backbone Entertainment and Digital Eclipse on Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2. I'm also an accomplished tournament player in Super Turbo, and I help run the Evolution Fighting Game Championships, the largest fighting game series in the United States. So, what do you need to know to play Super Turbo? The game is mostly about controlling space on the 2D playfield and pressing an advantage when you get into a good situation. We'll start with talking about the basics. There's normal moves, special moves, and super moves. We'll also cover the importance of throws and throw escapes, or throw softens as they're also known. And finally, I'll tell you how to pick some of the secret characters. There's actually 17 secret characters in this game, and I'll show you how to pick the best two. Controlling Space Street Fighter 2 has a 2D playfield with no sidestepping, so controlling space in the playfield really limits the opponent's ability to move and attack. They've got to figure out a way to get around fireballs, for example. Let's look at the game with some rectangles overlaid to see which space is being controlled. This large horizontal rectangle represents the amount of space Ryu controls with his fireball. Look at how much of the playfield it takes up. The opponent's going to have to figure out some way to get around that. This other vertical slanted rectangle represents the space that Ryu controls with his Dragon Punch. So if you jump over one of his fireballs at the wrong time, he'll be able to Dragon Punch you out of the air. This is his basic gameplay, and you can see that it's so effective because so much of the playfield is under Ryu's control. Now let's compare this to Bison's ability to control space. His Scissor Kicks and Psycho Crusher let him control a lot of the horizontal playfield, just like Ryu. You can see how his horizontal rectangle takes up the whole screen. But the difference is that these two moves, both the Scissor Kick and the Psycho Crusher, will lose to Fireballs. That means that when Ryu throws a Fireball, the space that Bison controls shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Bison's got to find another way around those Fireballs. Also, remember that Ryu had that big vertical slanted rectangle which represented his Dragon Punch. Bison is lacking that. And that's one of his weaknesses. If an opponent jumps in on him, he could try to do a stand fierce punch, but it has a pretty small hitbox and is not as high priority as a dragon punch. His other option would be to do a jumping strong punch, which is probably a better option, but still it's not as good as a dragon punch. Bison has to make up for these weaknesses with other advantages. Chun-Li can control a lot of space as well. She can throw a slow fireball, which takes up the entire bottom of the screen. And while it's traveling, she can do a jumping short kick, which takes up almost the entire top of the screen. In the example here, you can see that she ends with a standing fierce punch to further limit the options of the enemy. So during the sequence of slow fireball, jump short, stand fierce, Chun-Li controls almost the entire playfield. Now let's look at Zangief. This rectangle over Zangief represents the range of his spinning pile driver throw, also known as his SPD. That's one of his main moves and one of the best throws in the game. If you can get close enough so that your rectangle overlaps the opponent, then you can do the spinning pile drive. So that's what you should be thinking about when you play Zangief. Try to get that rectangle, which represents the range of the spinning pile drive, to overlap the enemy. This other rectangle represents the range of his low roundhouse. That low roundhouse is very fast and very high priority, so the enemy will be afraid of it. If you can get close enough to threaten with that low roundhouse, which isn't very hard, then they're probably going to be afraid and block. And you can use that moment, that moment when they're just a little bit afraid and blocking, to inch forward so you can get the pile drive. Now let's look at Vega. Vega's attacks are pretty long range because he has a claw. You can see that his rectangles extend almost half the screen even with his normal moves. But he can really control space when he starts going off the wall. He can either go off the back wall first or the opposite wall first. And either way he can advance while avoiding ground attacks and he can really control space. Move types. Just so we get the terminology straight, let's go over the different types of moves in Street Fighter. There's normal moves, special moves, super moves, and throws and holds. To perform a normal move, just press any of the six buttons. Jab, strong, fierce, short, forward, or roundhouse. 
You can also jump or crouch and hit a button to get a different jumping or crouching normal move. Special moves require a combination of joystick movement and button press, such as Ryu's fireball. To throw a fireball, move the joystick in a quarter circle motion, going from down to down forward to forward, and then press a punch button. Dalsim can also throw a fireball using that exact same command, but he's got a different move, the Yoga Flame, with a slightly different command. That's a half circle towards plus punch. So you move the joystick back, down back, down, down forward, forward, and then press a punch button. Guile Sonic Boom has an even different motion. You've got to hold the joystick in one of the back positions, such as straight back, or diagonally down and back. You hold it there for about one second, and then you go towards and press a punch button. Special moves usually have strong properties that normal moves don't. For example, Dragon Punches, Honda's Headbutt, and Balrog's Buffalo Headbutt are all invulnerable when they start. Projectiles like Ken and Ryu's Fireballs, Guile Sonic Boom, or Saget's Tiger Shots aren't invulnerable, but they do control a lot of space. Other moves, such as Honda's Flying Butt, Baylong's Flying Kicks, or Vega's Wall Dive, allow you to move forward while avoiding ground attacks. Most special moves do block damage also. That means that even if the opponent successfully blocks, he'll still take a little bit of damage. Super moves are even more powerful moves with even better invulnerability. Each character has only one super move in this game, and it can only be performed when the super meter is full. Super moves usually require you to input the motion of a special move two times very quickly and then press a button. For example, Ryu's Super Fireball is performed by doing two quarter circle motions with the joystick. In other words, you move the stick from down to down forward, forward, then down again, down forward, forward, and then press punch. You'll have to do the motion very quickly. Super moves can really change the match, not only because they allow for big damage comebacks, but also because they let your character overcome some of his weaknesses. Here you can see Ryu throwing a lot of fireballs against Saget, and it's a very difficult fight for Ryu. But once he gets his supercharged, he's able to throw a super fireball through Saget's fireballs. Here you can see Balrog having a tough time against Saget's fireballs as well. He has to use his buffalo headbutt to maneuver around them or jump in, but that can be deadly too. But once he gets his supercharged, he can use his super to go through fireballs even from all the way across the screen. Here we see Bison fighting against Zangief. Bison doesn't have any invulnerable moves except for a super, so if Zangief uses his jump fierce splash over and over against Bison in the corner, can actually be pretty difficult to get out of. If Bison has his supercharged, he can use it to hit the splash. It won't do much damage, but it is the high priority move he needs to get out of the situation. <laughs>